let's move on to step seven, which is setting up your security groups. Now, this is a really important part of Risk Easy. Security groups define access to your site. Everybody who is a user of Risk Easy is in a security group. They have to be. This is how we do access on the site. It's how we decide who gets to see what and who can do what tasks. So it's very important to get this right, possibly the most important thing of all on your site. So when Risk Easy is first created, when your site's first made active, you get a bunch of security groups automatically created. You'll get an all users group, which is set up and everybody that has a profile just goes automatically into that group just because if there's ever any need to pick someone and you want to see all the historical people that have ever been part of your church, then you just go to here to the all users and you'll find them. By the same token, you have an all managers group. If anyone's ever been a manager, they'll be added in here and maintained in that security group. And those come with specific access. You can see the super admin and I are the only people in managers and they have admin access to all functional areas. So pretty important to be careful who you put into that all managers group. Only super admins usually go in there. All right, so then there is a Townsville main board. So Townsville, because it's my main branch, my default branch for this um, profile. Uh, so the main board, the main event moderator, the main incident moderator, the main risk management committee, the main HR manager, those five groups are always created when you create a risk easy site. So the reason for that is that most of the churches we've spoken to have a need for these kind of roles to be played. There's a board that everybody answers to. There's an event moderator or event coordinator of some kind that basically says, yes, that event can go ahead or no, it can't. There is an incident moderator, somebody that is your kind of incident reporting safety coordinator person. And that might be more than one person. That's fine. We've created a security group. There's a risk management committee. So these are your people that make up your risk assessments and they get notified of incidents and they handle the outcomes and they do the risk reviews to see how the control measures are happening. HR manager is basically a human resources manager. It's somebody that has access to see all of the user profiles and can put people into their appropriate departments and so on. So those five groups are already created for you and you can go ahead and add as many more as you need. Just hit the add button up here and define it as you need. But let's go ahead and edit an existing group. Let's say the main board, let's see what access they have. Okay, so we just press the view button and here we go. We see this is the, the branch Townsville. The main board has full access, but they're notified of level one and level two incidents. So if something pretty serious happens, these people get an email. It's only one member at the moment, the super admin profile, which I'm currently using. Now, this is how the permissions actually works. Each of these modules is a different parts of Risk Easy. Okay, so you can see them, they're the same as the menu items on the side, the branches, dashboard, departments, events, forms, incidents, registers, resources, etc. Now, the really important part is of course the permissions. None means they can't even see it. You'll notice that in this particular group, the main board, the only place they have no access to is your security groups, right where we are, and settings. You don't want even your board to change your website, your Risk Easy site. You only want your super admin to do that. So they have no access to those things. In fact, everybody has no access to security groups and settings except for the super admins. You can change that. You might decide the board can have view access so they can see what's going on, but they can't change it. That's up to you. But I recommend leaving it as no access because generally speaking, this is stuff that you only want someone who really knows what they're doing to do. Okay, now the other kinds of access, so none is you can't even see it. User means you can see it and you have some privileges. For example, in incidents, you can add an incident report. In risk assessments, if you're a normal user, you can add a risk assessment, but it'll need to be reviewed by someone who has admin access. So this is full access to the particular module. So you can change this up. You might decide, hey, you know what? We don't want the board to have access to branches. We don't want them adding more branches and giving us a bigger bill. Or perhaps we don't want them having access to events. They can see what's going on, but we don't really want them to be changing things. Um, and then finally, the email column basically just sets who gets the notifications. Notice it says send admin level notifications. So basically, the, whatever the admin settings are, whatever an admin would normally get for that particular module, the people in this group would then get those notifications. So this is one that most people don't actually need. Um, it's only for the really important people that you need to notify of things happening. Um, 
Nobody likes heaps of notifications, so don't turn it on unless you need it. <laughs> okay, so that's how they actually work. You can just press update and there you go. It'll say, are you sure? And away you go, that's been done. Righto, so security groups. There's a lot more that could be said, but basically this is how you handle access to your site. Set it up how it works for you. Whatever your structure is, however it works, um, Risk Easy was designed to be customizable. So if you need more security groups, go ahead and add them and, and tweak them to suit you. If you need less, that's fine. Get rid of some, no stress. The only ones that you can't get rid of without breaking the site are the all users and the all managers. So I recommend leaving them as they are. They serve a specific purpose and you'll likely be calling support if you get rid of one of those because they are designed to stay there. But we'll just tell you to restore it because that's how we've designed the system. But that is step seven, set up your security groups. So go ahead and do that for your church or organization. And then we'll move on to step 